Welcome back to the New Indian Express's Think Edu Conclave 2021. As we step into a new normal, we talk about the lessons we need for this new world. We have a day full of intriguing and thought-provoking conversations planned for you. So sit back and enjoy. Our next speaker is working on a project which maps the human mind. And what's better, it is an Atmanirbhar project. Please welcome Infosys co-founder and chairman of Axilier Ventures, Chris Gopalakrishnan. Senior journalist Kaveri Bamzai will also join the conversation. Hello and welcome to yet another session at the Think Edu Conclave. I have with me Chris Gopalakrishnan, who is not only one of the co-founders of Infosys, but also one of the uh, leading lights of uh, research on the human brain. He's in fact uh, 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 donated money for three chairs at the IIT Madras, if I'm not uh, mistaken. And of course, the Brain Research Center at the Indian Institute of Science, which uh, he um, initiated and uh, sort of created in 2017. Um, so, so it's been about four years since that uh, center came up um, uh, and the uh, focus, if I'm not mistaken, was on uh, aging and to understand how the human brain ages. Um, uh, so what have the learnings been so far? And of course, then we'll talk about artificial intelligence because that's uh, really something that the world seems to be quite concerned about and rightfully so. So um, what are the learnings that you've had so far in all the research that's been done? Uh, so first of all, uh, Kaveri, uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, thanks to the new Indian Express group for inviting me for uh, this uh, very interesting uh, session and topic, a topic that's very dear to me. Yes. Uh, the Center for Brain Research uh, is established around 2015. So it's now about actually six years. Okay. Uh, since the center was established, it took a little bit time to um, understand, you know, what uh, or come up with what needs to be done. And uh, the two major programs that the center is involved, one is um, longitudinal study of 10,000 people over 10 years. Mm. Uh, these are people in uh, Srinivasapura village in uh, Kola district and people around 45, 50 years of age and to see how they age. Mm. And so we are uh, collecting uh, their health parameters, their brain and cognition parameters. We are taking MRI data. We are also uh, taking their DNA sequencing data and to see how they age uh, mm. over the 10 year period. And if they develop some, let's say, uh, uh, disorder, then we go back and study the data to see whether we could have detected it early, right. you know, uh, were, were there some early biomarkers. This data is probably the, the first uh, data set that we will have of Indian subjects over a 10 year period, uh, looking at their uh, brain function and things like that. So it's in that sense, very, very uh, important uh, data. Um, we are in the, you know, this, uh, whole thing kicked off in 2017, as you rightly said, this longitudinal study. And so we are in the early stages of um, starting to um, get enough data to look at uh, any trends, etc. Um, there is also an urban cohort. So this is the rural cohort, mm. which, are, which is being also tracked. And one thing, you know, which came out, um, you know, these are, of course, early observations was mm. that um, you know, it was felt that uh, stress levels in rural areas would be lower and hence strokes would be lower. But to right. our surprise, we found that stress levels are same or similar oh, in urban cohort and rural cohort. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and uh, you know, incidence of strokes seems to be similar. So anyway, these um, data points will have to be analyzed. But these are the kind of inferences mm -hmm. that uh, we can now start making from the data that we are collecting of course you know the cognition and the brain function will mm. also be studied in detail the second program or the project the sender is doing is mapping uh, 20000 uh, dna sequences of indian subjects okay. or mapping uh, <clears throat> dna sequences of 20000 uh, Indian subjects. This is a Department of uh, Biotechnology sponsored project, mm -hmm. which for, of which uh, uh, Center for Brain Research is one of the participants. Mm -hmm. And the reason for kicking this off is that, um, again, you know, when you 
need to look at um, uh, you know genetic data uh, understanding uh, indian uh, subjects uh, we need large databases and we found that uh, no laboratory in india had you know, such large uh, databases you know at most they would have 5 or 1000 right so let let us uh, uh, collect all these labs together create a central repository mm. and that's the genesis mm. of this project mm. this will also be used to uh, probably create a, a a a chip which can accelerate uh, and reduce the cost for dna sequencing of indian subjects so right. these are some of the uh, plans for the center for brain research right so uh, there's uh, there's uh, quite a bit of concern about uh, the kind of information, the kind of data that uh, the big uh, four, the GAFA as they're called, have about, uh, you know, the world and especially India, we're big users of, uh, you know, whether it's WhatsApp or Facebook, uh, perhaps their biggest market. Um, so is there a concern that concern, is that valid? Uh, in fact, someone uh, recently even went so far as to call us uh, the biggest uh, thought laboratory in the world uh, for these four uh, big companies and how um, Facebook alone maps something like 6,000 parameters of every individual. So where are we headed in terms of these machines knowing us better than we know ourselves? Uh, you know, a very important uh, question that uh, we need to ask, we need to have an answer to or a strategy to Right. Uh, clearly, machines know more about us than we know ourselves because machines collect, uh, they organize this data, and then they can run algorithms on a particular individual's data, but also population level data. So you can compare one individual versus all other people. Uh, compare, uh, let's say, Indians versus other ethnic communities right. or male versus female. So population level studies can be done. And, 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 you know, one, this data gives you so much information about the person and how to influence that person. Mm. So, you know, unknowingly, uh, we can be influenced to buy stuff that we don't need. Unknowingly, we can be influenced to, um, you know, vote, uh, you know, in a particular way or uh, think in a particular yeah. way you know it, it can influence us uh, uh, without us even realizing uh, that we are getting influenced and things like that and what that's is called the, brain hacking these days yeah in some sense you know so yeah. that's the uh, you know the 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 dangerous part of um, having so much data and things like that uh, and the and the business model that drives this which is you know seemingly um, free services right yes. right so they induce you uh, to use these services and provide this data by saying that the service is free you know you can connect with your friends you can right. connect with your relatives yeah. and communicate with them yeah. so um, you know we need to now think this through i don't i don't think it's unique to india this is a yeah. problem now the entire world is facing and you know and and the concentration of this data with just few companies uh, is where the challenge and the problems are and uh, the world is only just trying to figure out how to uh, combat this uh, the concentration of power is huge right so uh, just as Infosys was the leader in the in, uh, uh, IT revolution of the 90s, and then, of course, uh, in the 2000s, it really took off. Is there no um, uh, uh, is there no one out there, because you deal with so many young startups as well, is there no one out there, is there no idea out there that can become the next uh, big Facebook, but for India? And where we can sort of compete with um, these four big companies, but on our own terms. And what would these terms be? There is also the concern that this artificial intelligence, because it's based on Western models, is perhaps skewed towards uh, what is called Western values. Is there is that something that's also 
uh, a concern and can we in india uh, create our own facebook our own googles you know our own really big behemoths which collect data if data is the new oil which it is so there are so many questions in what I'm uh, sorry <laughs> you have asked first of all you know the information technology industry itself is very very varied yeah you know you have uh, the hardware providers right. you have the software like operating systems you have the uh, uh, horizontal applications like the search application or the social networking application your vertical applications like the erps that run the banks or run the retail industry etc and then you have the services companies now what india has done very well is in the services industry we are the world leaders if you look at the top 10 companies in the world five are indian they still five are still indian in the uh, vertical application is the topmost company in the services sector globally sir um depending on the market cap on a particular day it could be tara consulting services okay right? Right. right at the top you know there are one or two accenture is there um, you know tcs is there so um you know that's an area we are dominating and i i believe that we will continue to dominate because we have a uh, we have a uh, base today we have a professional base which understands how multinationals work and how global companies work and we have the services ethos in india the culture in india the second part is the vertical industry and we are starting to actually create products here which are going to be global products in the banking services industry today the top two or three products are actually of indian or indian origin uh, you know from tcs from infosys you know if you look at even the oracle product the genesis of that is actually uh you know from india and they acquired that company uh, there where we don't have and then the e-commerce application for example right uh, in the payment applications so in vertical applications in saas etc indian companies are starting to dominate and create unicorns we believe that um, the number of unicorns will become 100 uh, pretty soon this year we are looking at 50 and when it comes to that size you will have significant companies coming out of india where it's going to be challenging for us is to create this horizontal platforms like uh, you know uh, ios or android or windows you know there are only three in the world then these uh, horizontals like a search engine or a uh, you know facebook or something like that a social media network or a twitter and things like that that's going to be challenging because we need to come out with a new paradigm and then we need to have the marketing muscle the the investment dollars to make that into a global entity uh, i'm not saying it will not happen but that's little bit more difficult uh, for us to do Uh, you know, among the unicorns, among the young people that you mentor uh, at Axelor, and you uh, invest in looking at their potential, do you do you see anyone who's interested in this area and is um, uh, headed towards uh, bigger things? Well, uh, Geo is supposedly coming out with its own devices, its own operating system, its own social media uh, solutions, etc. So hopefully. you know we may have somebody uh, from india sort of dominating at least one market which is the indian market which is 20% of the global market right the other area where i'm actually quite optimistic is gaming right uh, and e sports and things like that i expect uh, again because we are large consumers yeah you know expect some um, big names to emerge out of uh, india if you look at the top 2 cricket uh, e games etc again uh, these are companies from india uh, nazara jet synthesis so you know it is possible that uh, we will have some uh, global companies coming out of india in some of these new areas so what are the things that we can do uh, at an individual uh, at a corporate and at governmental levels again three questions i'm sorry to sort of retrain our brains to adapt to this new world you know you will know our harare is often talked about the whole idea of knowing our, ourselves we also now have to know ourselves better so that we can compete with the machine which knows ourselves know 
knows us so well. What can we do to uh, at, a, at these three levels to uh, do this better, to play this game, this global game better? First and foremost, we need to have sufficient capacity and capability in this new area of AI machine learning, knowing that technology, how to use that technology, um, you know, contributing to uh, the development of that you know, new algorithms, etc. That's the first aspect. And the hardware infrastructure necessary to run this machine, uh, the, run these algorithms, because they, they require, you know, really high performance supercomputing infrastructure and things like that. Um, so that's the first aspect of it. And, and we are starting to uh, invest in that. You know, we, we, we are as a nation uh, talking about, um, you know, the need to uh, create capacity and capability in AI, including research so that we can come out with new algorithms and things like that. The second part of this is data, right? Uh, now uh, data, uh, you know, we de definitely generate huge amount of data, but who owns that data? I believe we, the, the ownership is clearly, you know, ours because the data belongs to us, but it is not stored by Indian entities. It is actually collected and stored by, uh, you know, entities outside the country. And we need to um, figure out how this data is available for our researchers, our startups to play around with and come up with new uh, solutions and things like that. Uh, the government is uh, looking at uh, policy around data, uh, looking at localization requirements. So even if it's uh, collected by a foreign entity, it's made available locally. Government is, you know, our own committee has recommended that if the non-personal data committee has recommended that um, you know, this data must be available for research as well as for innovation, uh, should be shared uh, for innovation, etc. And the third aspect is um, uh, both capital and uh, uh, human resources. Uh, so we need to train enough number of people in these new areas, create an excitement in, uh, you know, in, in uh, getting into these areas and the capital required to invest. See, uh, you know, sometimes we forget uh, that, um, you know, the capital is anyway coming, so why do we worry? But what happens is if that capital is foreign capital, these entities, these unicorns become actually foreign companies. Ownership becomes foreign. So domestic capital, Indian capital must actually come forward to own these entities and invest in these uh, companies and keep the ownership Indian, I believe so. Are you hopeful of that, sir? Well, I'm uh, very, very optimistic and hopeful about these things because, uh, see, we have seen significant changes, right, in India. Uh, you know, where did the flip card come? Of course, yeah. today it's owned by Walmart, but where did it come from, right? India only. Uh, yeah. We're talking about uh, 100 unicorns, right? So uh, I'm very optimistic about these things, but, you know, this is only the beginning and, and we need to um, create a positive virtuous cycle. Uh, what I mean by this is, you know, you create new knowledge, you create innovative companies, you make them, you know, scale them up and become very large, create wealth, and that wealth then gets invested back into research, creating new companies and you create a positive virtuous cycle. You know, this is how you know, the, the Silicon Valley works, the capitalism works, etc. We need to unleash that engine in India and, and, and this can only be done as an ecosystem. So, you know, we started with the brain, right? Brain sciences, I believe, is the most exciting area today or one of the most exciting areas today. The whole fourth industrial revolution yeah. is called the intelligence revolution yeah. and it, it involves all these technologies. So we need to create a positive virtuous cycle in India today of uh, uh, you know, research, uh, innovation, uh, entrepreneurship and startups, uh, you know, wealth creation, such that that wealth creation gets invested back. We need to excite uh, and, uh, and motivate our youth to um, actually focus on some of these areas, ask these questions about, you know, 
what are the advances in um, mm-hmm. brain sciences and how can we leverage these to solve new problems or pro- solve problems in new ways and and then create this positive virtuous cycle right so linked to this is the new uh, education policy that the government has come up with have you had a chance to look at it and see whether it is headed towards this direction it is you know they are talking about uh, you know problem solving skills they are talking about creative to be creativity they are talking about uh, multidisciplinary uh, you know studies and things like that you can take different subjects and accumulate enough credits they are talking about transferable credits they are talking about um, you know uh, getting in and getting out of uh, uh, you know the the um, educational system at different points etc all these i believe are um, uh, important changes that we want to bring about so that you you uh, create the uh, the right skills which is about problem solving creativity and things like that uh, research and you also give the flexibility for uh, students to uh, you know take on things that interest them right uh, and and that and and with different options and things like that right where are we to uh, in in the study of brain sciences uh, at a lower level at the uh, level of undergraduate studies or post graduate studies where are we uh, at that uh, at that level uh, so this is a growing field in india we don't right. have enough capacity right. and we need to <clears throat> uh, you know we need to attract more people we need to invest more in research uh we need to grow this field in india and the field is actually very very vast yeah you know all the way from the hardware uh, understanding the human brain as an organ understanding you know the um, for example the neurological disorders and we didn't talk about that and that itself is a huge field then taking those understandings and uh, applying that to um, you know the the technologies of the fourth industrial revolution you know the computer revolution and things like that uh, and uh, then looking at um, you know the the way in which brains can be influenced with the data uh, that we collect uh, you know to understand human beings and to understand then uh, questions which are going to be uh, or we are going to try to address in the future things like what is consciousness what is intelligence you know can we think about um, you know uh, completely mimicking a human being uh, how do we prevent ourselves from getting influenced by machines uh, you know things like of that nature and the ethical questions about uh, you know do we allow the machine to take decisions with uh, human life where human lives are involved etc these are very important questions and we need so this field is actually very very vast right um mr gopalakrishnan is there something uh, in our own uh, um uh, uh, ancient texts that can also help us uh, uh, sort of look at some of these questions after all when we talk about consciousness and intelligence these are things that a lot of our past um, greats have addressed uh, through history and time is there something that we can use from there and actually make it valuable for um, uh, contemporary time i believe so um, you know we uh, have a uh, uh, lot of um, practices you know see i see the difference between uh, what uh, we have in india and the knowledge that we have in india right. and the western knowledge <clears throat> the knowledge in india is based on from practice to the lab right you know we we have several practices and now we need to understand why we do certain things and why we why it works right yoga for example or meditation right why it works now we need to understand whereas the western world is you actually you know experiment in the lab and then bring it to practice so lab to practice so uh, we have a lot of ancient knowledge we know that many of those work and 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 and, and i think you know the 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 beauty of yoga and meditation is that it allows us to control the mind there is nothing in the western science that allowed people to control the brain other than medicine whereas here 
you know, we train our ourselves to control our brain. So there are things that we need to take from our ancient knowledge and modernize it and bring to the lab to, so that we can understand why it works. That's one aspect. Right. Now, the second aspect is the philosophical aspect. Yeah. See, Western civilization or Western knowledge systems are all about the individual being the paramount. Right. Right. Whereas in the Eastern philosophy, we think society comes first, right. the, the group comes first, and the individual is subservient to the society. And right. so peace, harmony are more important than sometimes individual freedom. Right. So, you know, the the understanding of both these, the differences, the, what are what is good about each of these and marrying these two, I think will also be very, very uh, important to think about the future. Uh, and a lot of the issues related to, uh, you know, what we talked about, you know, the these um, companies uh, having so much data about us and knowing a lot of things about us, uh, they, they actually uh, talk about individual freedom is very important. We yeah. say, you know, no, the, 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 the harmonious society is also equally important or maybe sometimes more important. Right. And this, I think we'll have, these debates will have to continue. Absolutely. But I mean, let's start those properly. I think that's what we need to do. We need to seriously engage and inform ourselves too. Uh, there's not enough information out there, do you think, uh, uh, among the leaders of corporate and political India and uh, uh, civil, civil society? Is there enough information out there uh, to engage in informed debate? See, there is actually, it's just that not many people are engaged in this. Right. We, we, we are really starting to invest in research, right? right. Uh, as, um, as businesses, as philanthropists, government has been investing in research and government is the primary investor in research. Right. We need to now have industry and philanthropists invest in research and then trying to encourage them to do that. And that's how the uh, discussion and debate and uh, knowledge systems are created. And, and we need to scale these up definitely in India because these are very, very important questions for the future of not just India, but the future of the world. Indeed, you know, you have somebody like Jack Dorsey of Twitter who practices Vipassana, you know, so he uh, perhaps is using the best of our tradition to, uh, you know, inform his uh, practices as well. It's interesting. And we ourselves perhaps have lost uh, out on that somewhere. It's an interesting thing, no? Yeah, yeah. So the interesting thing here is we still don't actually look at the science behind it. You know, there are a lot of vipassana practitioners in India. Yeah. But you know, we need to bring the scientific timber and try to understand. You know, what is the science behind it? Why it works, etc. And demystify it. Yeah. We keep it as a mysterious thing still. And I feel. Yeah, yeah. you're right. We still think so of it as partly mumbo jumbo, you know, that, uh, but uh, it has obviously tremendous benefits. And, you know, we've seen that in so many people in so many cases. Um, can we talk a little about the neurological disorders, which we completely uh, skipped? Uh, could you tell us a little about what we are in uncovering? So, um, you know, uh, the, the opportunity here is um, uh, to understand how um, as the brain ages, uh, we lose uh, some of our mental uh, capacity. <laughs> yes, capability. That's true. And, 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 and understanding that is very important because we are all going to live longer. Yeah. Right. Uh, uh, you, know, you know, if you look at, uh, you know, the, the data, it, say, it shows that average, um, uh, you know, longevity is increasing. And right. And it's also seen that because of our lifestyle, and this is the challenge, because of our lifestyle, um, you know, people uh, above the age of 65 uh, develop maybe one in five, 20% of people develop some kind of, um, uh, you know, disorder, dementia, yeah. et cetera. We uh, probably write it off as, you know, aging related mm -hmm. forgetfulness, et cetera. But some of those people may have actually medical uh, conditions that need fixing, etc. So understanding these are very, very important. And again, you know, uh, we don't have good data. 
Hmm. You know, is the incidence of dementia, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's same or lower or higher? Right. Um, we are um, increasingly seeing that lifestyle diseases like hypertension, yeah. diabetes are higher in India because again our sedentary lifestyle, food habits, etc. Now we need to fix them because they also trigger yeah. uh, stroke and dementia and things like that. So you know we need to understand this whole thing if you're going to live healthy longer, yeah. if you're going to uh, uh, reduce our disease burden, and then. Uh, you know, we need to then figure out, can we actually find cures? Hmm. And and the, and this will be a contribution to the entire world because the entire world do, does not have a cure for Alzheimer's, for example, right. does right. not have a cure for Parkinson's disease. Right. So this is something that we can provide to the rest of the world. Now, if the incidence is lower in India, right. and then we find out that it's because of our spices or, you know, we right. use turmeric and things like that. And, yeah. you know, it's supposed to have some uh, benefit to uh, the the blood and circulation the brain etc if that is so then this is something again we can contribute to the rest of the world you know another study that we am, i'm supporting is the whole herb uh, brahmi right right brahmi is supposed to help memory right improve right. memory and things like that uh, again we need a scientific study around these things and uh, understand why if it works, why it works, right? So these are the things that we can actually uniquely contribute to the rest of the world. So there'll be many more turmeric lattes in, <laughs> in America, I think. Yes, exactly. You know, people are uh, lapping it up. and uh, yeah. But the science behind it, uh, if it yeah. works, why it works, should also be understood. Right. Um, as our brain ages, of course, we lose uh, uh, certain things. What do we gain as our brain ages? Because sometimes you become smarter, don't you? <laughs> so, you know, um, see, there are two aspects. You know, one yeah. is um, uh, our ability to respond, our ability to remember. You know, we slow down things, and that's part of aging. But that experience that we have yeah. and the ability to uh, connect the dots and come out with, uh, uh, let's say, inferences, right. uh, come out with the responses, uh, is expected to become better as we age, as we get more experienced, etc. And again, the science behind it, we need to understand. And uh, how can we train ourselves to do hmm. that? See, what is beautiful about the brain is that till the minute we die, yeah. It's actually constantly learning, constantly, it's constantly learning. evolving. Yeah. Right. So can we train ourselves to learn new things as we age? You know, just like we can exercise our muscles, we can exercise yeah. our brain also. Yeah. yeah. Train to learn new things, learn new languages, new capabilities and things like that. In fact, that's one of the ways people believe that we can keep ourselves mentally young mm. is to, you know, try to do new things, try to uh, do things differently. Uh, you know, and, and all of these things people can actually uh, learn. You know, if you have certain habits, change those habits deliberately, do yeah. things differently. It trains our brain to do certain things differently. So youth is highly overrated. Uh, <laughs> see, today now, uh, you know, 60 is the new uh, young, what right? Yeah. So you know, people are going to live, you know, to 90, etc. And uh, we should try and see how we can, um, you know, um, prolong the uh, period of um, being, um, you know, contributors, good citizens, you know, right. uh, uh, I think that's what we need to think about. And it also then opens up other things like, you know, what is the retirement age? When should people stop working? Uh, I believe people should never stop working. They should continue to work till they die, right? So those are the things that we need to think about. So I wanted to ask you a personal question. What do you do to keep yourself mentally young? Because you're involved in so many things. You meet so many young people. Uh, you know, you're investing in the brain. What are the things that you do uh, as a daily practice or as something that you've retrained your brain for to keep yourself going? First is physically fit. I think, yeah. uh, you know, you can be mentally fit only if you're physically fit, I believe. 
Right. Uh, it's part of uh, being men. So I do exercises every day now. Uh, morning exercise and evening I try to go out for a walk. What do you do, sir? Do you do yoga or do you do, um, uh, you know... Um, it's a mix, actually. Okay. No, I don't go to the gym. You know, I, I do it at home. So I do some yoga, some aerobics, and right. sometimes I do elliptical. So, okay. so it's a combination of all these things. And the evening, we just go out for a walk. Uh, it, you know, it's it's a partly a relaxation also. Right. You know, you go right. to the park and walk and things like that. And the second is, uh, you know, you need to interact with people. You need to... Um, learn new things. So I read for about an hour every day. Right. Different, different subjects. Sometimes okay. it's novel. Sometimes it's, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, some science subjects or history. So keep reading stuff and things like that and interacting with people because people um, interactions are very, very important from a, you know, you have knowledge, but how can you, um, convey that knowledge so that somebody else can understand. Yes. It requires you to put that in a certain structure. Hmm. That itself, I believe, reorganizes your thinking, reorganizes your brain. Right. And then um, new insights may come out of that. Uh, and a lot of the things that I'm now um, starting to understand better, I'm only starting to understand better, has happened in the last five, six years. Even computer science, uh, now I understand better because of my uh, trying to understand the brain, etc. Right. What have you read recently, which you really enjoyed and which you would really recommend to us? Because I know that you're very generous in your recommendations. You're always sharing what you've just read or just heard. And that's really wonderful because it gives the rest of the world, uh, uh, you know, a way forward. What have you just read, which you really enjoyed? So, you know, I, I uh, recommend Yuval Harari's uh, books, you know, The Sapiens yeah. and uh, right. Homo Duos. That, that gives you a glimpse of what happened and what is possibly right. going to happen. You know, yeah. that I recommend. He also uh, studies Vipassana. So interesting. He also practices Vipassana. No, I, I find that more and more uh, people who, um, you know, are thoughtful, think about yeah. uh, these things are looking at meditation, etc. because they, they understand that's how you, you make the brain uh, more um, active and more powerful, mm -hmm. You're right. right? It allows you to, I think, restructure your thoughts and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, then I read uh, stuff on uh, genetics and uh, gene and things like that. Uh, there are multiple uh, books in these areas. Uh, I'm, I'm the third uh, aspect I'm um, uh, reading is about AI machine learning. Uh, the latest, uh, it's not a book, it's the massive report the US has come out with. Okay. Just released, uh, it's about 750 pages, Oof. the government report on what US needs to do in um, uh, AI machine learning you know, the fourth industrial revolution, the right. new technologies that are emerging to retain their leadership position. It's right. a fantastic document. I just started reading it and I recommend uh, recommend uh, you, uh, I'm trying to think about, you know, you know, how can I give you a pointer to that actually? Uh, it's about 750 pages. Um, uh, it's a national security committee that has been created. Okay. Right. And, and the report was just in February released. Okay. So I'm sure if I look it up, I'll find it. So just one last question before going, you know, we talk so much about the India-China rivalry. The real uh, um, rivalry is also in AI. China is far ahead of us, isn't it? How did they manage to do that in the last 10 years? And we sort of, you know, uh, lost the plot somewhere. So they had a strategy around AI machine learning 10 years back. Mm -hmm. You know, we are starting to build a strategy. So we okay. are kind of, you know, behind in that. Even the U.S. has admitted. And if you yeah. look at this report, this report is all about how U.S. can regain that. Right. And the way you can regain is uh, investing in research, investing in people, investing in entrepreneurship and startups, because these are the companies that create the products and the services. Right. And government working together with industry and academia to... Um, you know, develop and execute this strategy. It can be done. I strongly believe that it can be done and it must be done. Uh, we're starting to do that. 
um, we, we need to um, be at it and we need to take the time and the effort and the resources required to make that indeed happen. Yeah. I am confident about our people, right? So what we now need is the systemic response yeah. and the resources that are required and the focus that's required. Right. Then we can do it. Yeah. So is there any uh, leader in this field, uh, independent, attached to a university, whom you really uh, uh, track and whose uh, ideas you uh, look forward to uh, in India or the West, uh, in, in AI and the brain, someone whom you follow? Well, there are multiple people, you know, when you look at, uh, you know, uh, the, the science and the machine learning, you know, Jeffrey Hinton and people like that are the scientists be behind that. Of course, most of these people are now either with Facebook or Google or Microsoft <laughs> or Apple. They have, you know, they have, they have, uh, they have uh, recruited all these people. Um, then, you know, you look at, uh, you know, reports such as this, uh, there is a, a, a very good report which China produced five years back. Right. You know, by 2030, they wanted to be dominating in the area of AI and machine learning. Right. And they, you know, they gave responsibility to industry. They gave responsibility to academia. They put money behind this. They um, attracted the best people right. uh, from outside the country to come to um, uh, China. Uh, so they did a lot of things, uh, you know, uh, to make it happen. Um, it, it just, you know, it, it just requires us to, um, I think we need to focus on this. See, just like we're focusing on space. Yeah. Right. And, and we are a leader in space, yeah. right? So just like that, I think we need to uh, truly, truly believe that this is going to transform, yeah. uh, impact all our lives. And then we need to set specific goals and targets and put money behind it and make it happen. Right. Is there anyone in India whom you would recommend one follows in this area, sir? Uh, Professor Kamakodi at IIT Madras is one person who is uh, knowledgeable, who is uh, trying to work in these areas. But, you know, it's not just an individual, right? We right. need that complete system, system. Uh, okay. behind it. Like your center. Yes. Uh, we need multiple of those centers. Yeah. We need uh, large... Uh, researchers we need a large number of startups and we need money right thank you so much uh, mr chris gopalakrishnan for informing us i think it was a fascinating discussion there's so much to learn about ourselves and about our brains and um, it it was a real pleasure to talk to you thank you very much for talking about mapping the human brain thank you very much thank you thank you did you enjoy that session we hope you did you can connect with us on facebook twitter and youtube if you want to check out the entire schedule and other sessions, log on to eventexpress.com, newandexpress.com or edxlive.com. Thank you for watching.